The problems that lie in front of us are daunting and disturbing. So where does our hope lie? And what is the one idea? I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but uh, to set it up, I'd like to read the opening of chapter one. I'm a poet, as many of you know, and uh, I thought it was appropriate to begin this book with a poem. The house is on fire. The people in the house are sleeping and in great danger. Seven of their neighbors will come along, each with an opportunity to save them. Person number one does not see the fire. Consumed in his own thoughts, he passes by in ignorant oblivion. Person number two sees the fire, but not wanting to get involved, walks on by. Person number three sees the fire, but shocked and terrified is left immobilized in a state of, of panic. Person number four sees the fire and immediately takes action, first phoning the fire department, then knocking on the door to wake up the inhabitants. Person number five sees the fire and, daring what no one else would, enters the house to try to save the inhabitants. Person number six sees the fire, surveys the scene, and discovers an opportunity to promote his own interests and make a buck. He's the one handing out his business cards to sell his stuff. Person number seven set the fire and lurks unnoticed, watching the destruction, not caring really about anything at all. The house is Mother Earth. Which person are you? This poem encapsulates the central overriding issue of our time. Our world is on fire and on the verge of collapse. What are each of us willing to do about it? How do we galvanize people to do what is necessary and right? The house is your house. The people trapped inside are your children and grandchildren and all your descendants in times to come. They have no power to avert the, the disaster that awaits them. By the time they are born, it will be too late. Only we can save them. I believe in humanity. I believe, like Anne Frank, that despite all the evil we see in the world, most people are indeed truly good at heart. This is where our hope lies, in the essential goodness of each individual human being. But I'm not one to sugarcoat the truth. The path we are on right now is the path of self-destruction. In American culture, in our politics, we've been cynically divided into the red team and the blue team. We're all playing football against one another and betting on horse races in the news, but we're not really talking to one another. And most importantly, we are not addressing the dire issues that threaten to destroy human civilization. Climate change didn't even come up in the presidential debates. Too few people are paying attention to the fact that our house is burning. Even fewer are working hard to douse the flames. Most people are the ones, twos, and threes in my poem. The number ones are the people who don't even see that the house is on fire. They don't really understand that there's a problem. They live in ignorance of the situation, consumed with the trials of everyday living. The twos are perhaps the most frustrating. They know that the world is on fire, but they refuse to help in any way to put it out. They might be lazy or apathetic. Some are just too comfortable and, and want to live their lives in a self-centered kind of way without bothering about the larger community. Some are just too jaded and cynical, believing that there is nothing they can do that will make any difference. The threes understand that the world is in trouble, but they are paralyzed with fear not knowing what to do. The fours and fives, of course, 
are the people who are taking action every day to help others. The fives are even willing to risk their lives to do so. We need more fours and fives in this world. If you don't watch out by the end of this speech, I may convince you to become one if you're not one already. <laughs> the sixes are the opportunists who take advantage of the injustices of the world to serve their own selfish interests. Usually they are profiting in some way from the misfortunes of others. Often these are not the nicest people you'll ever meet. Uh, many convince themselves that kindness, compassion, generosity, and other human virtues are just silly notions for those who are naive. The sevens are the people who are deliberately setting the fire. They are knowingly involved in activities that are harmful to other people, other creatures, and the planet itself. Some would call them sociopaths, some would call them evil. I prefer to think of them as spiritually ill. They are living in denial of the one idea. You've heard the saying, the world is at sixes and sevens, meaning that the world is in a state of confusion and disarray. Indeed it is. The sixes and sevens like it that way because they are profiting from it. The rest of us, however, are in danger of being consumed by the fire. The world is in peril, folks. We are in the midst of social, political, spiritual, economic, and environmental upheaval. Scientists and other concerned citizens have been sounding the alarm for decades. Sir Martin Rees, England's astronomer royal, says the odds are no better than 50-50 that our civilization will survive to the year 2100. National Geographic reports that only 10% of all large fish, including tuna, swordfish, halibut, and flounder, are left in the sea. The World Wildlife Fund laments that only 3,200 tigers remain in the wilds of Asia, compared to 100,000 just 100 years ago. When 97% of climate scientists agree that global warming is real and largely caused by human activity, shouldn't we all be paying serious attention and doing everything we can to ameliorate the situation? Isn't that just common sense? Every single day, according to the UN Environment Program, 150 to 200 species of life go extinct. This is almost a thousand times greater than the normal rate of extinction. Like the dinosaurs before us, humankind may well go extinct. But unlike the dinosaurs, incredibly, we will have brought about our own demise. Imagine. All the noblest advances of human civilization and culture throughout history, gone forever. All that knowledge, science, music, art, and literature, gone. All those generations that came before us, what would they think of us now? Our mothers and our fathers, who did their part to make this world a better place for our sakes bit by bit, century upon century. For what? It is up to us now. What kind of people are we? Are we so selfish, greedy, and cruel that we would throw it all away? We are the last generation with a real opportunity to save the world. The one idea can save us, and it may be the only thing that can. Okay, so what is it, the one idea that saves the world? 